It's Christmas Day, 1941, and 23-year-old American pilot Bill Reed is stationed in an airbase near Rangoon. His squadron have been told to expect an attack, and at 11 a.m. they get the signal to scramble. Climbing into the airspace in Burma, he holds position with four other fighters over Rangoon. They are at the controls of American Curtis P-40B fighters, under the command of Claire Lee Chenault, known affectionately as Old Leatherface. Bill's orders are to attack the enemy from above. At 15,000 feet, he thinks he's high enough. The enemies are the Japanese, who up to now have been masters of the air, raining down hell on China and the Burma Road, a vital supply line. Bill is from Iowa. The devastating attack upon Pearl Harbor took place a little over a fortnight ago, and it's fresh in his mind. Half an hour goes by. Bill and his team scan the clouds for signs of approaching planes. The Japanese were reportedly preparing to strike. One of Bill's team rocks his wings to show he's spotted something. Scanning below, Bill can see nothing. Looking up into the sky, though, he sees them. Dozens of enemy fighters and bombers loom over Bill's patrol at a few thousand feet above their current position. Commander Chenault's tactic of striking from the highest position goes out the window today. Bill is going to have to play this very carefully. The P-40s are at their best when flying above the enemy. There are two 50 caliber machine guns on the nose and a couple of 30 calibers on the wings. Targeting is a challenge because the P-40's gun sights are on the rudimentary side. These aircrafts are at an advantage when bearing down, relying on altitude and airspeed as the P-40 is a slow climber. This isn't an option for Bill today. Instead, he'll have to rely on the sturdy build of the P-40, as it's going to have to take a lot of punishment. Bill aims his plane at the heavens to get to the bombers, but one of the Japanese escorting fighters sees the threat and heads down to meet him. It's clear he'll butt noses with the enemy. Closing fast, he opens fire on the Japanese fighter. He's on target, peppering the fuselage with tracers, and it's a critical hit. On his way to the bombers, Bill engages in skirmishes with two other fighters. But determinedly, he presses on, the bombers are at 20,000 feet, and Bill engages them head-on, firing all of his guns. But today, luck is with the Japanese, as his shots either miss the target or don't cause enough damage to stop them. Flying past the formation, Bill throws the P-40 into a tight turn to get a second pass. As he turns, he spots another American pilot in trouble about a mile away, beset by the Japanese. Reed swoops in to help. The dogfight spills out across the Andaman Sea in South Burma. A spiraling dance and a bullet-strewn whirlwind of fighting ensues. However, no one could get shots on target. With fuel running low, Bill and the other P-40 decide it's time to break off and get back to base. While heading back home, the two P-40s see three more Japanese fighters below them, heading back to base in Thailand. Already low on fuel and over the sea, they decide to chance their luck with yet another dogfight. The two American planes drop down behind the Japanese, firing on them from behind. Bill narrowly avoids a fiery end as a dragon explodes at close range right in front of him. The other P-40 clips the wing of another Japanese plane and it crashes into the sea below. With one Japanese fighter left, Bill swooped lower away from it to escape. Seeing even more Japanese flyers coming into view, Bill checks the gas meter, which is critically low. He realized he must get out of the sky as soon as possible. Otherwise, he's going to sputter out and crash into the sea. He finally lands back on the airfield with barely a drop of fuel to spare. Looking at his bird, he realizes it's covered in holes, saying later, these P-40s absorb lead like a sponge does water. He doesn't realize it, but Bill is part of a major victory against the Japanese today, with 15 fighters and nine bombers being taken down. The mood in America is somber this Christmas after the shock and devastation of the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor. With some good news, the press have a frenzy with everyone wanting to hear how this small band of American pilots have taken the fight to the Emperor's aviators. The wounded America strikes back against the Empire of Japan. But Bill isn't exactly flying on behalf of the US. While America is only just entering World War II, 
He's been on his own path for a while. He traveled to China to be part of the American Volunteer Group, or AVG. This brave and adventurous group of pilots and ground crew are lured away from the US Army and Navy with promises of adventure, better pay, and bonuses for every Japanese plane they down. The US authorized the sale of 100 P-40s to China to help them in their fight against the Japanese. But what was not made public was the American pilots and ground crew who went with the planes. President Roosevelt authorized the clandestine operation. Commander Chenault was allowed to recruit Army and Navy pilots and crew. But as America wasn't able to help officially, they had to resign from the military and join the endeavor under a commercial agreement. As such, Bill and his pals are fighting for Chiang Kai-shek, leader of the Republic of China. Under the direction of Commander Chenault, the servicemen helped the Chinese build a fighting force in the air. Japan had been inflicting heavy blows on China since the early 1930s, and China needed the right kind of expertise to mount a defense. While not in the air, the AVG didn't exactly behave like a military unit. With no official uniforms and an odd kind of discipline, many had long hair and sported facial hair. Some even had pet monkeys and gave the appearance of somewhat of a menagerie. Many of the men drank frequently, but when it came to performance in the air, they were stone-cold professionals. The pilots became known not only for the shark motif painted on the noses of their planes, but also the image of a cartoon tiger on the side, a symbol of the name for which they'll forever be associated, the Flying Tigers. In 1942 and 1943, Chenault recruited and trained Chinese pilots and aircrew at a time when the world came together to defeat a common enemy. We'd like to thank one of our viewers, Kevin Chow, for supplying details of his grandfather, Major General Fred Chow, who trained under Chenault and received the Distinguished Flying Cross, Purple Heart, Air Service Medal, and Presidential Unit Citation from FDR. You can hear more of his story in an interview with him in the link in the description. We hope you liked this video. If you did, please consider supporting us on Patreon. We need more patrons like you to help us make more videos like this. Thank you.